Excel guitar fretboard creation. Get ready to rock, roll, and make a spreadsheet. This is my Christmas project gift, I guess. We're going to be building this Excel worksheet, which has a lot of Excel formatting, so it's great practice for the use of Excel. But instead of doing accounting stuff, we're going to be doing music theory stuff, and more specifically, guitar music theory stuff. And I really think this is a great tool if you are learning the fretboard, if you know anybody else that's learning the fretboard, or if you just want to learn kind of music theory in general in terms of what keys are in a scale, what's the relationship between a major scale and a pentatonic scale, and the major scale and the minor scale, what are modes and all that kind of stuff. And of course, this being Excel, we would like to map all that stuff out and be able to easily change it from one scale, say C major, to another scale like G, for example, and then see all the related information related to, to that scale, such as the relative minor, the pentatonic scale, and all that kind of stuff. And Excel is an excellent tool, which you often do not find from uh, music courses who aren't typically using Excel worksheets, but they, I think they should because it's like the best tool, I swear. So first of all, we're gonna have the fretboard up top. So we'll map out the fretboard up top from, in essence, the musical alphabet that we'll create down below. And uh, then just note when we make the fretboard, we're gonna put the, I'm gonna put the thickest string, the string that's highest to the ceiling when you play the guitar on top, the lowest pitch, highest to the ceiling, and the high string closest to the floor, the skinny string, highest pitched on the bottom. Because I think intuitively, that's how most people would envision the fretboard. Now, when you see the fretboard mapped out, they oftentimes reverse it, putting the skinny string on top. If you want to do that, you can. You can just build it that way. But I think intuitively, it makes more sense the other ways. Otherwise, you have to rotate the guitar around in your mind. In other words, if you're looking at the guitar, you kind of have the small or skinny string on the bottom if you're looking towards it. But when you're playing it, you're behind the guitar. So I would think intuitively, at least to me, and I'm a little dyslexic, so maybe I'm just funny here, but I, I really don't think it's one of those things. I think it's I think it's how most people see it. If you were to imprint the guitar this way, you would have then the low string on top, the heavy string on top. So that's how I'm gonna build it here. And I think for a lot of beginners, at least that's, that is the way that they would catch on to it most, I would think. And then we're going to construct that by first creating the musical alphabet. We've repeated it a couple times so I can easily copy and paste any root to any other root, such as, for example, C to C right here. And then I'm going to copy that down to here so I have the notes from root to root. So if I'm in the key of C, I'm going to copy from C to C. If I want to switch that to G, I copy from G to G. I can just copy this, paste it right there, and boom. The whole thing changes. Every All the related stuff changes. It really should work quite nicely. I'm going to undo that and stay in C because C is the easiest thing to first start out with. But that changeability, crucial. So then we've got the notes in the major scale, which are being mapped from the notes that are between C and C and the musical alphabet using the equation of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half uh, equation. That's the, that's, the, that's the major scale kind of equation. This half just gets us back to the root. And then from that, we'll actually look at the pentatonic scale, which is kind of embedded within the major scale. We'll create this, this in a circle. So now you've got the same notes in a circular format, which is a great tool to be able to build the actual, uh, the, the chords in a particular scale. And so we'll build the chords now notice that if it has a capital here on the Roman uh, numbers, it's gonna be a major. And, and if it has the lowercase, it's a minor. So the one, four, five of a major scale are gonna be the, the, uh, the normal triad chords, meaning major versus the minor. And then we just mapped out the notes in each chord. All the notes are gonna be within the scale. We just choose every other note, in essence, as we go around the circle. And then we'll do the same thing for, for the, the minor. So now we've got the relative minor, which is A, is the relative minor to C. So we can see what the relative minors are. And then if we want to do the whole modes thing, 
We can look at the Dorian mode, D Dorian's related to C major, all the same notes in C major, and then Phrygian, E Phrygian is related to C major. Everything starts from the major, or that's how we think of it oftentimes in Western music. Lydian uh, will be F Lydian, which is related to C, and then Mixolydian, and so on. So all of that put together, and all of that should change relative to us just changing the major scale by just copying some other major. If I wanna go from E to E and see all that stuff relative, I can just copy and paste that tier and everything changes down here to have the formulas mapped out for us, which is great. I'm gonna undo that. Then on the fretboard up top, you've got the formatting. Now we're gonna go 24 frets out, even though most guitars, you know, don't go too much past 12, which is where it starts over again but it's nice to see it kind of repeat itself a couple times. And you've got the conditional formatting up top. Let's see how this works. It's great. I'm going to I'm going to take the conditional formatting off here. Rules, clear the rules. I'm going to make this smaller and I'm just going to say, okay, what if I just want to see the notes in the major scale? So I could do that. I could say, let's say conditional formatting. I'm going to say make it equal to a C and make it red. Boom, there's all the C's. I can say conditional formatting equal to an E, make it red. Boom, conditional formatting equal to a G, make it red. And then we've got all of the stuff that makes up basically a, a, C, uh, a C. So I can kind of try to try to map that out. So this is, if I was to take my little thing here, I can I could say okay there's the C so I would put my finger here boom 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 and there's your C and if I was to move it up you can kind of map it out now sometimes it's nice to see the this these three in a different color so you might say okay I'm going to I'm going to say I got to grab three different colors so I'm going to say let's clear that rules clear the rules and I'm going to say I want to see this one equal to a C and make that red and then I want to see this one equal to a E, but I want to make that yellow. And then I want to say this one's going to be equal to a G, but I want to make that, let's say, the green. And then I can, I can zoom in on it, boom. And then I can take my my little highlighter here and say let's look at one position at a time this is frets zero the open fret and there's there now i can see all the ways i can grab a c basically and i this is the open chord so i would be grabbing this i would be grabbing this this and this and you can see you got the c's e's and g's that's how you make up a c chord c e and g and then if i was to try to say this is your caged system if I was to say, what if I wanted to move up on the fretboard and play those same notes? I just got to grab those colors. I can then say, okay, it's C, A should be the next, the next thing. So here it is, boom, and those three. So I could play just those three, but if I can grab that one, that's basically your A shape. And then I can say, okay, what's after A in the caged shape? You've got uh, G, so from here, to here so these are in a or g you can call it and then see these are the g shape now you can't really hold a g bar chord but just noting where those are means you got a lot of opportunities to still kind of make a g with just three chord three notes all you need is three notes and then the caged after that g format you've got a, a g an e which is right there so that's the next shape so that would be a C and an E because normally if this was barred off, you would just be holding those two down, which would be an E. Uh, and then you've got the D, right? Then you've got the D, which would be here, which most people visualize as these three notes because that's where you put your fingers. But this one would be open if it was at the end, but you could just play those three notes. That would be a D. And then it would start over again at the C. So now you started over at the 12th fret. So that's quite quite nice to be able to kind of map that out and you can map out the caged system here. And then if you wanted to look at the pentatonic scale, 
for example, you could say, I want to look at the pentatonic scale. So I'm going to go here and clear the formatting, Let's clear the cells, and the pentatonic scale is down here. Let's see how far down I can go. It's right there. So I can say, let's look at that. That should, and I'll just make them all the same color so it doesn't get too clouded. So I'm going to say rules equal the C rules uh, equal. It's a little tedious to do this, but it's way better than writing it down by hand. And then rules. And there might be a faster way to do this, I think, too. But an E rules equal to a G and then rules equal to an A. So now we've got our pentatonic. So this will include everything that had a C, but now we've got the added two notes. So I can, I can then try to analyze that and say, all right, let's take a look at my positions here. So here's your, here's your pentatonic shape. And you can start to connect these shapes. The familiar shape to most people in the key of C or, or the relative A minor is on the fifth right there. So that boom, 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 boom. Most people oftentimes learn that as their first kind of rock and roll uh, uh, shape type of thing. But, you know, you can connect these together. And then, and then again, you can connect these notes together. And if you play all these notes, you should be in the same key. You can make chords within there. You can see how the major... Uh, notes fit in there. You can see how all the other notes or not all other notes because we're on the pentatonic scale But most of these other notes kind of fit in there if you wanted to make the major scale again You can just add the other two that we're missing from the major scale. So you could do the major scale up here We're missing a, a B and an F. So if I just if you took the whole thing I'll just add a B and F and say we want to say boom highlight and i want to say equal to a b but let's make that green because it's not part of the pentatonic or yellow and then i'll say highlight and i want it equal to an f and we'll make that we'll make that yellow too because it's not of the not part of the pentatonic and boom so now you've got your now you've got your pentatonic and then the yellow represents the added two notes to get you up to the major scale so you can see how useful this can be. It's way easier than writing this stuff down. It's, it's quite nice. All right, so let's see how we can build that in Excel just for an Excel project. So I'm gonna go and just open up an Excel worksheet. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger, scrolling in here. I'm gonna hold control down and scroll in. So I'm at like 220, uh, it's going a little further. So I'm at 250. And then I'm just going to start to kind of build my fretboard. So the fretboard starts at zero and then one. I like to make the whole thing basically centered as my default for this particular project and bolded, emboldened. So I'm going to select the triangle. I'm going to go up top and say I want it bolded and I want the whole thing centered on the alignment. Now I can then copy these two, put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it out. So notice that it goes up to 12 because now we're talking the notes. So I can go up to 12 right there. But I like to repeat the fretboard. Most of the time, most guitars have a few frets over the 12th fret. Uh, but I'm going to make it go all the way out to 24 just so we can, we can see the fretboard theoretically repeat all the way out to 24 because that could be useful just to see how everything rolls around uh, as we go. So I'm going to go out to 24. Then I'm going to select from Y all the way back over here and make these more skinny. So I'm going to put my cursor between the B and the A and the B and make them thinner. So I think that's all the room like right there that we might need. Let's make them actually, let's make them a little wider than that. A little wider. And I'm getting a little picky. Okay. So then let's go from the frets on the guitar. So the guitar, I'm going to put a caps lock on to make everything capital, have an E, an A, a D, a G, a B, and an E. I'm not going to, I'm making that a small E because the small E is on the bottom. 
I'm not going to get into why that is right now. It's, you know, they're forced apart. They're, they're all even apart except for the distance between these two, and it works quite well. It's actually seems odd, but it's actually very, very good. So I'm going to then select all of these. I'm going to make them my header by going to the font group and making this black and white. And then I'm going to select all of these and make those... Uh, black and white. So I'm going to say black and white on that one as well. So those are my, my headers. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is construct my musical alphabet here. So it goes from, from A to G. So I'm just going to start at A so it's nice and familiar. And then I'm going to construct my musical alphabet. Now I'm going to skip the, the, uh, the sharps and flats for now, and then we'll add those in a second. So typically it would be A, B, C. I'm going to select those three and take that out to G. <laughs> Look at those rhyme, it's not going. It won't see, the, you can't see that pattern. Okay, whatever, I'll type it in. C, D, E, F, G. So there that is. Now, uh, the sharps and flats kind of are a bit confusing. So notice that between each of these notes, you have a sharp or a flat, except between the uh, e and the F, so I'm gonna make that one like yellow so you can kind of know where those that is and the B and the C. For some reason, there's not anything between those two, which is a little strange, but that's how it is. So you just gotta know that. So then I'm, I'm gonna pull these and there's gonna be a note between A and B. So I'm gonna pull this over here. Now the note could be called A sharp or B flat, rather whether you're going from left to right uh, or right to left. And the part of the reason for that is when we start constructing our scales, we don't want to have a scale that has two, we should have one note of each, each letter of the alphabet up to G. We don't want to have a, an A and an A sharp. So if there's an A and an A sharp, in other words, we want to call it an A and a B flat. And that kind of is quite annoying, but at the same time, I kind of feel like it's like an internal control from an accountant's perspective so that you don't mess something up. So if you have two letters that are the same, something's messed up. And so maybe that's part of the reason, but whatever. So I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call it just a lowercase a, b. So, and what you wanna do is kind of emphasize the fact, look at the, look at the major notes or the whole notes, and then picture the fact that that middle not, note is, is the sharp or flat. It's a half step in between. That's how I would kind of visualize it. So, so then otherwise it gets too crowded. I'm going to put it there because we need it there uh, in order to do some Excel formatting stuff. But otherwise I would just kind of visualize that there's a half step between everything except B, C, and E, and F. Okay, so then I'm going to go here. There's another half step here, which I'm just going to call lowercase C, D, which, which stands for C sharp, you know, D flat. And then there's going to be one between here and here, which I'm going to call D, E. And then there's going to be one from here to here, which is going to be, which is going to be F, G. And then I'm going to take that and there's going to be another one from to G, A. Now I'm going to take this whole thing and copy it again so that I have two rows of our musical alphabet because it repeats. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna put it right there, boom. So now we've got the musical alphabet from A to, to uh, G, uh, G sharp, A flat, and then we're gonna basically repeat that. And that allows us to basically go from C to C, for example, right here. I could just copy from here to here. It allows us to copy any, any starting point to any ending point, which, is, which will make it nice. Okay, so now I'm going to try to de-emphasize the sharps and flats so, you, so that you can kind of visualize them as being there, but you don't, they don't need to be, but you want to have your focus, in my opinion, on the non-sharps and flats and just visualize the sharps and flats as the half step in between. So I'm going to make this a lighter color. So I'm going to go up top and say, I want to make this like, like, uh, let's make it on the color. Let's make it like that lighter orange okay so there is that so that looks good 
So before we start filling out the fretboard, let's first just think about the notes from C to C because those, those are the easiest notes to think about because they're the natural notes. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna call this notes from, let's call it uh, notes from root to root. Notes from root to root. I'm gonna put this on, I'm gonna left align this. So I'm gonna left align this, there we have it. And so, so then I'm gonna copy from C to C. So we're gonna go from C to C. I'm gonna copy from here to here. Those are all the notes from root to root. And I'm gonna paste that here. So there we have it. And I'm gonna, let's make this just black and white as a header. So I'm gonna go up top and make this black and white. So those are the, and then just to get an idea of how we would construct the a, a major scale from that, we could say, okay, this is going to be the we're going to call this uh, notes in uh, scale, and let's say major scale, major scale, and the first note will be the scale that it is in because we'll be able to copy and paste this, so we know it's in C because that's where it is starting on. So the notes in the in the major scale is going to be now the formula for this is going to be i'll put these in the middle these are the distances between the notes so it's going to be whole whole half whole tab tab whole tab tab whole tab tab half so that's kind of the formula i'm going to make that this nice nice softer color because i want to emphasize the notes but i do want to see what these distances are between the notes. You can think of this as a mathematical distance, just like if you're measuring something tonally, these are how far or in between things are. So your ear can your ear can hear, hear the distance from one thing to the other, and it can see symmetry or dissymmetry when there's kind of a difference between the distance of the pitch of one thing kind of to the others, my interpretation of it. So I'm gonna hold control down. I'm gonna highlight all of those and let's just make it the drop down. Let's make that that orange here. And then I'm going to be picking this one up. So I'm going to say these are C right there. I'm going to say tab, tab. And then it's a whole step. So now from C, if you imagine the, the a piano, that would be like the, the black note. And so this would be D. That would be the next uh, whole step. So this is going to be D. And then going from D, uh, it's going to go over this note, which I should make that color again that's the in-between note let's do it there and there did i do it over here i think i got them all okay and so then so there's that and then this is going to be another whole step so from here it skips this half step the sharp or flat and we go to e and then we've got the natural the natural half step that's why we don't have any sharps and flats in the key of c that's why it's the easiest one to start off with so this is going to be then uh, F and then tab, tab. And then we're going to go from F whole step, skipping the sharp and flat to G, which is going to be G, tab, tab. And then we got from G whole step, the next one is going to be A. So that makes sense. It's going to be all the natural notes, of course. And then from A whole step to B looks good. And then from there, we got the half step to get back home back to, to, to the one again, in essence, is the C. So that's gonna basically be our construction of the major scale. So let's make that one black and white too, fonts black and white. And so then what we'll do here is we'll say that we're going to, uh, let's, let's number these as well. I can number this as number one, number two, these are the notes in the scale, this is the third. This is the fourth, this is the fifth, sixth, seventh, and then back to one again. So, and then we can also see, once you have that, the chords that will be related to them, which are often represented with large or small uh, numbers that are going to be Roman numerals. So this is the one chord which I could represent with an, I'm going to say a capital I, and that'll be representing that it is a major chord or triad that we'll look at shortly. This one will be a minor. So this is the two chord will be a minor D chord. The three chord will be a minor I, I, I. Uh, 
chord and then the four chord will be a major which is an IV capital IV Roman numerals and then a capital V a major chord so notice the one the four the five will be major and the rest are minor except the seventh is, is diminished and, and weird which I won't get into V I minor and this is the weird one which I'm going to say V I I and diminished so I'm, I'm not going to get into why right now that's another topic for another time and then the one is back to the one you're back to the one here let's go ahead and put some brackets around this so I'm going to select all of these go up top font group drop down let's put some brackets around it let's put some brackets around this let's put some brackets around this whole thing possibly some borders okay so there's that now let's start filling out our fretboard up top so this is an e so it's starting on the e that's actually an open position right now so if you if you just play an open e there it is so i'm going to go from e but i'm not going to include the e because i already have it and i'm going to start at f and go from f to ending at the e right there so i'm going to copy that that's our musical alphabet starting after one note after the e and i'm just going to paste that right here paste it and that takes us to e on the 12th fret that makes sense and then i'm just going to take that whole thing again i'm going to go this time i'm going to copy from e to e which should take me all the way out to 24 and it should repeat uh let's go actually i shall take it from let's let's copy the format of this e and put it right there boom so there it is and then let's go from f to e copy that and paste it right there boom and so that should take me out to the 24th fret so it repeats after 12 we usually don't go up 24 frets but theoretically it'd be useful to have it possibly now i'm going to do the, the same thing from a so i'm going to start the note after a right here and then go out to a which should end at the 12th so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to i'm just building my fretboard now so there we have it and then I'm going to format this one the same format with that so I can see that it starts over right here and then I'm going to go from here to here copy that paste it and it should end at 24 at A again let's do the same thing for D so I'm going to say D is right here to, let's start the note after D from here to here copy pasting right there boom and then I'm gonna make this one the same format. I'm gonna copy from this to D and paste it out again. And we should end with another D at 24. Then we'll do the same thing for G. So I'm gonna go from G, the one after, repeating to G right there. Copy that and paste, boom. I'm going to format this one because it repeats at 12. Highlight this, copy that, and paste it here, and it should repeat at 24. So then we'll go from B. So I'll go to the note after B, which is a C. C to C. Copy. Pasting right here. Oh, hold on. Not C to C. The note after C to C. Actually, no. C to B. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to put my cursor here and format paint it to make it black. And then go from C to B again. Copy, paste, and we should end off at a B. And one more time. This time we're going from E to E again. So I can really just copy these notes up top. Except I have a small one down here just to show that it's the high E because it's the same string on the bottom of the guitar, just a higher pitch of it. So I'm just gonna copy these down here and then I'll copy this one right there. And then I'll copy these again right there and then copy this one, boom, there's our fretboard. Fretboard constructed. Now I'm gonna take away the yellow highlighting. So I'm gonna select all of this and drop down and unfill it. I'm gonna select all of this and unfill it so there we go okay so hopefully that mapped out okay so we might go back up to that in a second 
Now let's go back down here and let's let's think about our our project down here. So I'm going to try to emphasize some of these the notes as opposed to these the distance between the notes. I'm going to select all of the notes and let's make them black and white to kind of make them stand out because that's those are going to be the main things we're going to want to look at. I'll make it black and white. I'm also going to make the one, the four and five black and white. Just to note that when you look at the chords, it's often useful to be playing the one, four, five chord because they'll have similar shapes and you start to see the major shapes and the minor shapes as so that whenever you're playing a major chord, you can think, okay, I'm looking for the major shapes versus the minor, minor shapes. So you can play the one, four, five, you can play the, the two, three and six, but you got to realize that you're playing in the key of C, which means you'd, you'd want to have a C in there somewhere <laughs> if you're playing in the key of C, which we'll talk more about in a second. Now you can also play the pentatonic scale, which is a five uh, scale, which is good for soloing, particularly because it's, it's less likely, uh, one reason, it's less likely that you're going to hit a, a sour note, uh, r whether someone's playing in a major or minor scale, the pentatonic well, kind of is a good is a good scale to just you know guess with if you're if you're kind of uh, picking around and it'll it'll sound it'll sound good. So we'll we'll see the pentatonic here and with the related minor when we get to which is A A minor is the related minor for C, and then we'll change it. We'll flip everything around by just copying this stuff over. Notice that the way we've constructed this thus far, if I was to copy from say G to to G right here and paste that right here, then it should change everything down below properly. That's that's the goal that we're kind of going for so that you can have all this related information and be able to adjust it and, and map all this stuff out as quickly as possible. So I'm undoing that, sticking with C because C is the easiest one to work with. And we'll do our pentatonic. Now, before I get to the pentatonic, let's actually map out our this same thing in a circle now. So this is going to be a little bit unusual, possibly if you've never seen this before, but I think it's quite useful. So I'm going to start it right here. And let's start it right here. This is going to be, this is going to be equal to the root note, which is going to be the C. And I'm trying to construct a nice circle in Excel, which is a little bit difficult. So I'm trying to map this out. This is going to be right here in uh, X14. And so the next note is going to be a D. So I'm just going to pick up the two note. Let's do it from here, which is a D. And then I'm going to go down. Let's go down like right there. This is going to be equal to the three note, which is going to be the E. And then this one is in, let's say, V, V18. This is going to be the four note, which is an F. And then let's say that this is going to be right there in T, T. Actually, let's move this one down one. I'm going to, I'm going to say control X and put it right there in V19. And then this one is going to be in T19. I'm saying T19. It's going to be equal to a G. And then I'm going to pick the five note up, which is going to be an R16 is going to be equal to the, the five note, or this is the six note is going to be an A. Hopefully I've got this right. And then I'm going to go up. We'll, we'll, we'll see shortly. And then an R uh, in R13, R14, let's say this is going to be the seventh or a B, and then it starts back over at the one. So hold on a second. Something looks a little off, doesn't it? Well, let's keep on building and see what it looks like. So then I'm going to then number these so I can say that this is going to be, you know, the one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just going to hard code the numbers for now. I'm just going to say this is number, this is the one. I'm just, and then we're going to go around in the right to the right. So this is going to be number two. This is number three. This is number four. This is number five. 
this is number six, this is number seven, and then back to one, eight or one. I'm gonna make these all black. I'm holding down control to select all of these. I'm gonna make them black and white to emphasize them. I'm gonna make the C because that's the root, that's what the scale we're in. I'm gonna make that red. And then I'm gonna make all the numbers. I'm holding down control also red. I'll make those red. Do I wanna make them red? Maybe I'll make them orange. Nah, I'll make them, I'll make them red. And then, and now I'm gonna put the distances between these. So the distance between the, the one and the two is gonna be once again, our formula of the whole. It's a whole step to get there. And then between two and three, it's going to be equal to a whole. And then between three and four, it's going to be equal to a half. Between four and five, it's going to be equal to a whole. Between five and six, between five and six, it's going to be a whole. Between six and seven, it's going to be a half, I mean a whole, and then between seven and one or eight, it's a half to get back home. So the reason it's nice to see this in a circular format is because now we can see this repeating indefinitely. And when we construct our chords, uh, this will be quite useful. Okay, so I'm also going to, I'm going to try to make these whole, whole half steps uh, yellow so they're less they're they're gonna, not going to stand out quite as much was, is my thought i'm going to hit make this and make it make it yellow and then i'm also want to put my numbers up top so this is the one so i'm going to say this is equal to the one so if you were to make a chord then that would be a c major is that is what that's indicating and then you can also play a the two chord which is a minor you can play the three chord which is a minor and then the four is going to be a major and then the five i hope i got my norm my roman numerals right i think that's how you say a four and a five and a th <laughs> and then the six is a minor and the seventh is a diminished which is kind of funny which again i'm not going to get into uh, at this point but there that's the general idea and it's useful to see i really like this circle because you can see the one four five in the major scale are the major notes and so in the one four five and a minor and then the minors are going to be over here the relative minors a as we'll see shortly so we can see the one if i was to make this one two three four five the one four five and the relative minor of a are going to be all minor chords which is kind of kind of nice to be able to understand because then you're saying okay i'll just play the one four five in a major or a minor and they'll all be either major or minor depending on on if i'm in a major or minor <laughs> So let's let's select these. I'm going to select I'm going to put some borders around all this stuff. So I'm just going to select everything. I'm holding down control and I'm just selecting everything from here. I'll just put some borders, font group borders around the whole thing. So so there it is. That looks pretty good. Okay. So from that uh, I'll pick up the pentatonic scale. And we're basically picking five of the seven notes for the pentatonic scale. So we'll just pull them from up here for now. We might have to change this, but I'm going to say this is going to be one, the two, the three, and then we skip the four to get to the five, and then the sixth, and we don't have the seven. Which kind of this, uh, So then we're going to say the one is going to be the C, and then the two is the D, and then the three is the E, and then the five is the G, and the six is the A. So there that is. Let's make this black and white for the pentatonic. Black and uh, white. Let's just, let's just put a bracket around this top item. So what I'll do up here is I'll say let's go let's right click and format this thing and then i'll align it center across the selection and then i'll just make it a bracket around that and then i'll just put some brackets around these 
So there's, so I think that will work as we copy it forward. Or if I was to change the root, all those should change automatically. So there, there we have this. So that looks good. Now, just from this, again, now you can go up top and you can use your conditional formatting up here. I can hold control and scroll down and I can then say, okay, if I just want my pentatonic shapes just to test this out to see if it mapping out correctly, I can say, uh, let's say insert. And by the way, when I looked at the last example that I started with, I think my numbers were off down here, although the pentatonic notes were right. So I'm not sure what was going on with my worksheet, but I think we got it right now. So I'm going to go to the notes drop down and say, if I wanted to pick, this is going to be the equal to, and then I'm hold, I'm going to scroll down and say, I want this to be a C. We'll make it red. I'm, I'm going to scroll down a bit and then let's do it again and say, we want this to be equal to a D and make it red. And then I'm going to conditional formatting equal to an E, make it red, and then conditional formatting. And we'll make this equal to a G and make it red. And then one more time in the tedious process, equal to an A and make it red. And then if I scroll back up, and I, foc and I focus in on this. I'm going to go all the way in so I can now look at a particular point on my fretboard. So, boom, super focused. And then I'm going to put a, I'm going to put insert. And then we'll put a shape in it. I'll put a shape here. And so it's a square. And now I'm going to remove the middle of it by having no fill in the middle. And then I'll put a border around it. Let's make it red. And let's see if I can change the, the width of the border. Not too much. Maybe like, that's probably, let's make it like that thick. And so, so now I can take this and say, does it make sense? Does this look like a pentat? If you're familiar with the pentatonic shapes, that one might be the one that most people, you know, kind of learn first. And then I can kind of link that to another shape on the fretboard. So I can make another one of these. Let's just copy it. Control C. And now I've got another one. So this would be like this, what I would call position number two. You could also call this first one like a G shape, pentatonic scale, you know, because it's got the G shape within it. So in any case, or you, you know, whatever, I'm going to, I'm going to say that this is going to be a green border. And now you can see position two and you can kind of maneuver around. And, uh, and so it looks like it's populating the way it's supposed to. So if I'm missing anything, let me know. But then down here, you can change it, of course. Now, if I said, if I said I wanted to go from a C to a G, I can copy from G to G. I can paste that right here. And now, now I can construct my G major. My pentatonic should populate automatically. My circle should populate automatically. And then if I scroll up, now position one, that familiar shape is in the G position because it's a G shape position number one, you know, that we often learn in a pentatonic scale, the G shape fits within it, but we have two extra chords in the pentatonic scale or notes in the pentatonic scale. And then there's position two. So you can maneuver these around and just see, okay, how's the fretboard lining up now? So there's that. I'm going to hold control, scroll back down. So that's pretty neat. So the next thing we can do is say, what if I want to just uh, build build out maybe my the chords and actually know the notes in the chord. So I know it's a it's a G, a G major chord and an A minor and a B minor that I can play in the key of this case G. Let's take it back to the key of C. I'll copy the the C's again. I'm going to put the C's in here. So now I know it's a C. I I could play a C major. I can play a D minor. I can play an E minor. I can play an F major i can play a g major i can play an, an a minor and the b diminished but what chord what notes are in those chords so let's actually build the the chords so i can see the notes that are in them that's the and we'll build that from this little circle that we constructed so I'll hold control i'm going to scroll in a bit and so i'm going to make this one a little bit smaller and we'll start building this on a a so let's say we have a 10 let's say so let's go to to 
A A nine. And I'm going to call this major or Ionian, which is another way to say, you know, the major. For now, I'm going to left align this home tab alignment, left align it. And then we're going to have the chords. And I'm going to say this is going to be a C. And I'm going to hit the space bar because I don't want to put chords there. And then over here, I'm going to say major. And so it already says major up top, so it's a little bit redundant, but we're in the C major. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller right there. I'm going to left align the, the chords for now. Let's left align that. And then I'm going to put my notes over here, the notes in the chord. So within each chord, we're going to, we're going to basically have a one, three, five of the chord, not the one, three, five of the C scale. These are the notes within each chord. So you got to keep that a little bit, it gets a little bit confusing, but not too bad. I think, I hope. And so we're going to go down here and say, okay, let's, let's say this is going to be the C major. So let's bring this in a little bit and let's left align this for now. I'm going to make this smaller. I don't need to see the whole word because I basically have it up top in any case. And then I'm going to put the, the numberings up top. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the one, which that represents that it's going to be a chord that's a major chord. And then the two is going to be a minor. I'm not going to re-put the numbers one, two, three to seven, because I'll just, these are the numbers. It's a bit redundant to do it. So I'll just keep the Romans because it gives us an added piece of information, which is the minor, major, or diminished chords. So I'm going to pick those up like so. Okay, and then we're going to we're going to put the notes which are equal to C and I'm going to do all this with relative formulas so that I can copy it over or it will change automatically if I change anything, <laughs> if I change the scale. So this is going to be a G. This is going to be that one. Okay, I got messed up here. The two is that the three is that this is an F. This is a G. This is an A. This is a B. Boom. All right, let's make this I'm going to make this black and white, black and white. I'll make all of this black and white, black and white. I'll make this I'm going to have these notes cover these three notes. These are going to be the notes that we're going to build within a chord. Every chord has three notes within it. I'm going to right click here and format this alignment. And I'm going to say center across and I'm going to make it a different color. I'll make it like dark blue. So I'm going to go home tab. Let's make it like dark blue and then make the letters white. And then this I'll center this across right click format and I'm going to alignment and center it across. By the way, I, I don't like centering it by basically uh, forcing it to to merge because then it kind of messes up the columns or it has this big cell in there. So I tend to use this method as opposed to merging if I can. I'll put some brackets around that and then I'm going to make this black and white. So I'm going to say let's make this black and white. So there we have it. And let's make this bordered font group bordered. And then now I'm just going to go around my circle and start from C. And all you have to do to build the notes is just skip every other note. So we're making triads, but we don't want the notes too close to each other. So we, so in order to get that nice triad feel, we're going to skip every other one. Now the distance, the distances between the notes are slightly different because you got a whole step, a whole step from, from, from here to here. But when I go from here to here, for example, I've got a half step and a whole step. And so notice the, the distances are different, even though I'm taking every other note because of that. And that's why we end up basically with these majors and minors, even though we're, we're picking every other note uh, in the scale in essence. So if I, if I think about that, we're going to say, okay, we're going to start with the C and then I'm going to tab, I'm going to skip the D and I'm going to go to E tab 
and then I'm gonna go from E I'm gonna skip the F and go to G enter now I'm gonna do the same thing from the D to build the scale I'm gonna go from the D tab this equals I'm gonna skip the E and go to the F tab this equals and I'm gonna skip the G and go to the A and enter now I'm gonna start at E which is right there number three this is the E tab equals I'm gonna skip the F go to the G tab this equals I'm gonna skip the A go to the B and enter now hopefully I'm gonna do this properly all the way through it's a bit tedious this is gonna be the F tab now I'm starting on the F I'm gonna skip the G and go to the A tab and then I'm gonna go from the A I'm gonna skip the B and go to the C enter now I'm on a G chord major chord I'm gonna start with a G tab and then I'm gonna skip the A and go to a B tab and then I'm gonna skip the C and go to the D enter now I'm on the A six chord and so there's the A tab equals skipping the B and go to the C tab and then I'm gonna skip the C and go to the go to the uh, then I'm going from C skipping the D and going to the E so hopefully I don't mess any of these up so then I'm gonna say this is gonna be the B tab and then I'm gonna go from B skipping the C to the D tab and then I'm gonna go from the D skipping the E to the F enter boom so there we have it so now we've got now we've got the chords which which are major minor minor major major minor diminished but then you got to think well what notes are in the C major the D minor the E minor well now in which you might memorize on a guitar by shapes right <laughs> but you can find the notes then and now we've mapped out the notes in each of those so I'm gonna I'm gonna select these three and make this a little bit thinner let's bring this down a bit see if we can get it as skinny as possible so there we have it I'm gonna select these and then put some brackets around it so so there we have that so that looks good so now what I'd like to do is just copy this whole thing over so that I can try to map out the minor uh, the minors the relative minors and then and then go into the to the modes the other modes so to do that if I copy this whole thing over what I'd like to do is not have to copy like this whole side of things so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just I'm gonna go into each of these cells here and change it to a a mixed reference now it's a little bit tricky but basically I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard that makes it absolute dollar sign before each of them but I don't want to make I don't want the I want a dollar sign just before the A and not the 12 because if I copy it down I'd like it to be able I'd like to be able to copy it down and I'll, hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate why that would be the case later so I'm gonna say dollar sign before the A but not the 12 and then I'm gonna do that over here F4 and then I'm going to delete the dollar sign before the 15. I'm going to double click here and then F4. You could hit F4 a couple times until you get a dollar sign, not before the number, but before the letter to make that a mixed reference. F4, I kind of like just deleting it before the 15. F4 and then delete before the 15. And then on the A, F4 and then delete the dollar sign before the 15. And then double click here, F4, delete the dollar sign before the 15 okay so now what I'd like to do is take this whole thing and copy it uh, to the right so I'm going to I'm gonna make a skinny column right here I'm gonna make this a skinny column and I could just copy the stuff down here this is all I want but it's a little bit easier to copy the whole column so I'm gonna copy the whole column and then I'm gonna delete some of the stuff up top that I don't need so I need to go from Q all the way over to uh, AE so those that's what I need let's go to let's copy the skinny too. I'll copy I don't need to copy the skinny so I'm gonna say control C scroll up I got to put it at the top here on AG 1 or else if I put it on AG 2 or something below it won't paste so I'm gonna right click and paste it normal right there and then 
I don't need this stuff up top. So I'm going to select all of this stuff and right click and delete it. But I don't want stuff to move up. I want to make sure I delete it so it doesn't move anything around. So I'm going to delete and then I'm going to say shift cells left. Don't shift the cells up or it's going to move this stuff up. I want to move this stuff to the left because there's, there's nothing on the right. So I'm going to say shift cells left. And then I can also delete this. I don't need uh, this. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to format paint above it. Home tab, format painter. And just click down right there. So that looks good. So now we want to look at the relative minor over here. So I'm going to say the, the sixth, if I was looking at this is the one, the sixth is the relative minor. So I can just basically, I'm not going to reorientate the whole circle. I'm just going to say this is basically number one and I've got to rename everything. So I'm going to say this is number one. This is number two. This is number three. This is number four. This is number five. This is number six. This is number uh, seven. So there we have that. And the items with the whole, whole halves, I should have basically hard coded these. So I'm just going to hard code these now. So when I copy it over, I don't have to do that again. This is H. It's always just whole because I'm not going to change the rotation. And then this is an H and this is a W. This is a whole, this is whole and that's half. Okay. So there's that. And then I've got to reorientate the numbering system. I'm going to make this, this isn't the focal point now. So I'm going to unread that one. I'm going to make that just white and I'm going to make this one red. That's number one. Now let's make it red, which is the letter. And then I've got to do my numbering system. So notice over here, these have has to be a minor. So I'm just going to number this number one with a capital with a lowercase I. This is two. This is now two with an I I. And then we have number three, the ones at the top and the ones down below are always, always going to be the uppercase, whatever the number is, because the re relative major C scale, it's still the same, right? It's still the same notes. We're just starting. We're focusing in on A now. So I'm going to call this number three, I, I, I capitals. And then number four, this is minor. So I'm going to call it I, V. And then this is minor. So we'll just call it V. And then the major is going to be VI for the six. And then uh, seven is going to be VII. So you still got the major, major, major and the tops and bottoms and the minor and the diminished on the sides. And I should represent the fact that this is that weird diminished one with a dot. I'm just going to put a period <laughs> to show that because I'm not going to get fancy with the, with the formatting in Excel. So there we have it. So now you can see that the minor is just the same notes and chords as the major. It's just that when you're playing the minor, you're going to be focusing in around the A. So that's, which is, that's useful to know. So now you could, and now if, if I was just going to reorientate, I'm just going to reorient my, my chords, same, they're the same chords, but I just want to make them so that, that A is now number one. So we can call this a minor scale a minor, which is what we normally call it, or Aeolian, which is the mode name, because a minor is just another, like a mode. So this is going to be an A minor. A minor is the relative minor to C, therefore has all the notes and chords in it, but they're, they're just ordered differently. So I'm going to reorder everything. I'm going to delete this and just say that now we want this to be the uh, well, let's first put the notes in here. It's going to be an A is our focal point, enter, and then a B, and then C, and then D, and then E, and then F, and then G, and then we'll put our, our numbering. This is going to be a small I for a minor. This is going to be the diminished is now number two, it's, which is important to note. And then three is the minor and four is the minor. Five is now the minor. Six is now major and seven is major. And now I can just construct the same notes again. So it's the same thing. We're just going to say, all right, now I'm just starting at A, but I'm still just going to take every other one. So A tab. This equals, I'm skipping B to C tab. I'm skipping D to E. 
that's what's an, that's what makes an A, those three notes. And then the B, I'm just gonna do the triad right now. I'm gonna say this is a B, and then I skip the C to D, and then I skip the D, and then I skip the E to F, right? It goes from D, E, F. And then we're gonna say we have a, and then we have the C, which is gonna start at C, skip the D to E, skip the F to G. And then we've got the D, which is gonna be a D tab, skip the E to F, skip the G to A. And then the E, skipping the F to G, skipping the A to B, and then the F is gonna be F, skipping the G to A, skipping the A to C, and then finally the G tab, skipping the A to B, skipping the C to D. So there we have it. Now the pentatonic is gonna be the same notes as well. So I can also just say, okay, let's, this is gonna be equal to, let's say the pentatonic here, but we're just gonna reorder the notes again. So I'm gonna left align this for now, left align, and the notes here are gonna be, well, the, the notes in it are gonna be A, C, D, E, G. Same notes, but instead of starting at the C, you know, we're starting at A for the pentatonic, the relative pentatonic. If I number those from the perspective of, of the A major, it would be the, the one, or the A minor scale, I'm sorry, the A minor scale would be the one, it would be the three, it would be the, hold on a second, my numbering system got messed up, one, two, three, this should be a four, shouldn't it? Four, and then the E should be the five, and then the G should be the seven. So it would be, hopefully I got that right. So the same notes, A, C, D, E, G, which are C, D, E, G, A, and then we've got the relative placements with relation to uh, the minor being number one. So it would be the one, the three, the one, the three, the four, the five, and the seven. I think that's good. So let's go ahead and make this black and white, black and white. Let's put some brackets around this. Let's center this, selecting this, right click. I'm gonna format and center it. We're gonna center it, okay. Then I'll put some brackets around that. So that's the ma that's your major, you know, uh, meat and potatoes of everything. But you could do the same thing for the other modes now. So if we got into like the modes, we could just do the same thing and say, okay, let's just copy this whole thing again. I can copy from here. Well, let's just copy the whole thing. I'm gonna copy the skinny, I'm gonna go from the skinny on over to here and copy, I'll go up top. I gotta be in cell in the first column, control V. And so there we have it. So now I'm over here and the next one's gonna, this isn't, okay, that looks good. Okay, so this one is gonna be then Dorian. So that's one of the other kind of core like modes now. So how do the modes work? So these are gonna be in, this is gonna be in D, this is D Dorian. And now we're still just gonna do the same kind of thing, but now I'm gonna start from C, it's, it's the relative D, D Dorian is right here. It's relative to the C major. So now I'm gonna do the same thing we did with the minor, but I'm just gonna start at the D. Now it's kind of useful to think about these, a Dorian mode, kind of like the major and minor are basically our, our, our main two that we think about in Western music at least. And then you might think about like a D, D is it more similar to a, like a normal D major scale or a D minor? And then look at the differences. It's kind of similar to a D minor scale if you mapped out a D minor and then you mapped out what's in a D. But we won't get into that. We'll just construct it right now. We're gonna say, let's make this 
the D is now the one we're focused on. So I'll make that red. Let's just delete all of this stuff. So we're on D Dorian. And I'm going to say then, let's just renumber it. One, two, three, four. We don't have to change the whole, whole halves. Five, six, seven. And then I'll change this. This is going to be the, the lowercase now. I, number one. And then I, I, because those are always lowercase over there. Minor. And then this is going to be I, 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 capital for the three. And then IV for the four capital for major. And this will be minor VI. And this will be the diminished VI with a little dot. We're going to say a period for us. So there we have it. Let's construct the Dorian with a D. So it's going to be, this is going to be equal to, this is our starting point now. And then the E. And then the F. And then the G. And then the A and then the B and then the C and we don't have I'm not going to do the pentatonic down here I'm just going to right click and delete that and shift up and so so we'll keep that as is if you're playing a, if you're playing a, a Dorian which is related to the C you might be able to get away with a C pentatonic right there but usually we think of the pentatonic or at least I do as related to the major and minor, but uh, which would be C major and the related A minor uh, in my mind. But that's that. So then we're going to say this is going to be equal to the one. This will be the two. This will be the three. And this will be the, the four. So these are the chords that we'll be constructing now. And there we have that. And why is this one up top a three? This should be a seven. Okay. And then I'll just do this again. So I know this is getting tedious, but we're going to say this is a D. You know, we might be able to say to copy this over because it's all relative. So if I said, if I said, well, here's the D, I'm just going to take those, copy it and paste it right there. Boom. Did it do it? It didn't do it. Oh, I, it won't do it because it's, it's not quite relative. All right, that won't work. Sorry about that. D <laughs> to F to A. We want to have formulas because I want to be able to copy it, copy it over. So this is a bit tedious, but I, I don't see a better way to do it right now. Maybe there is one. Maybe there is one. And this is going to go from G to B, skipping one. This is an F. This, then we're going to skip the G and go to the A. Then we're going to skip the B and go to the C. This is a G. And then we're going to skip the A and go to the B. And we're going to skip the C and go to the D. This is an A. We're going to skip the B and go to a C. We're going to skip the D and go to the E. This is a B. And we're going to skip the C and go to a D. Skip the E and go to an F. And then this is C, and we're going to skip this D and go to the E, skip the F and go to the G. Boom. So I, unless I, I did that fairly quickly, I hope I'm not missing up anything, but that would be the Dorian. And of course, we can do this for the rest of them. So let's just keep rolling with the next one. Assuming I got everything right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy the skinny all the way to BK, Control C. And then I'm going to put that in the BL, control V, boom. Okay, now the next one's going to be, the next one is going to be over here. And we're going to call that, that's in BX. For some reason, I'm a little bit different than my, I see what happened. We're good. Okay, so this is going to be, I'm going to say Phrygian. And this is going to be E, uh, Phrygian. Phrygian. Weird names, I know. And then I'm going to remove this. And that just means that it's the E Phrygian is just the third note relative to the C. So all the notes are going to be the same as C major, just like A minor is relative. It's a, it's a mode in essence. So I'm going to make this the focal point. I'll unredify this, making that white again. And then we'll just renumber one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. We'll renumber with these numbers. These are always going to be minor chords. So this is this is going to be the number one right here with a small i. And then we've got a made with uh, uppercase major, which is number two i i i i i capitalized. Then back to lowercase on the sides. I v. This is that diminished five v lowercase diminished. And then this is going to be uh, going to be. V I I, right? No, it's V I for six <laughs> and then V I I lowercase for seven. Hopefully, I got that right. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so then we're going to say the notes are going to be the same notes as in the C, all the naturals, C major, but now it's because it's the relative Phrygian mode. And so we're just going to build this out. Now it's focusing in on the E. So if you were playing this, you'd just be focusing around the E instead of the C as your home base to make it sound Phrygian-ish. And so then we're gonna say the lettering is the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, and the seven. And then we'll just construct these chords again. This is the E minor tab, skipping the F, going to the G tab. Oh, hold on a sec. Not a, this needs to be E. And then skipping the G or skipping the A, going to the B. Hopefully, I'm okay. I'm not going to stop saying hopefully I did that right. I'm, I did it right. I know I did it right. Skipping the G, going to A, skipping the B, going to C. And then the G down here is the next one. Skipping the A going to B. Skipping the C going to D. And then we've got the A. Skipping the B going to C. Skipping the D going to E. Then we've got the B. Skipping the C going to D. Skipping the E going to F. Then we've got the C. Skipping the D going to E. Skipping the F going to G. And then we've got the D. Skipping the E going to F. Skipping the G going to A. Boom. Phrygian. Okay, and then we can continue on with that process. The next one is Lydian. So I think that's good. So let's copy from the skinny over to CA. Copy. Put that down in C, B, 1, Control V. I'm going to save this as we go. I think it's saving as we go. And this is going to be Lydian. So I'm going to put my cursor in C, M, 9. This is going to be Lydian. I'm going to delete all of this. I'm going to put Lydian here again. Lydian. And this is going to be F. So now we're focused on this one. Let's make it red. Making it red, not that one, not that kind of red. That's too red. Maybe I should have done it that way, I don't know. And this one's gonna be white. So now we're gonna say this is gonna be, let's number this out. This is now the number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. And then if I number it this way, this is gonna be capital for, for a major and then I I two and then three lowercase I I I and then this is going to be I V with a dot for four number five capital five major this is minor again six V I and then seven V I I and then we'll put our notes let's start with the notes which will be F G A B, C, D, E, and then we'll put the relative numbers, which are going to be I, 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 number two, number three, number four, whoa, hey, what happened? K, pa, so, 
This is number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. And then we'll make our notes again. So this is an F. Tab, skipping the G, going to the A. Skipping the B, going to the C. This is a G. Skipping the A, going to a B. Skipping the C, going to a D. This is an A. Skipping the B, going to a C. Skipping the D, going to an E. This is a B. Skipping the C, going to a D. Skipping the E, going to an F. This is a C. Skipping the D, going to an E. Skipping the F, going to a G. This is a D. Skipping the E, going to an F. Skipping the G, going to an A. This is a... What is this? This is... <laughs> I don't know what this is. This is an E. Skipping the F going to a G. Skipping the A going to a B. So there's that one. And we can continue on with this. And we can go to the next one. If I've made any errors, you know, I apologize. Let me know. But we're going to go to the next one. And just to finish this out. So I'm going to copy from here to, to CQ. Control C. Scroll up. Put that and CR1, control V, and then this is gonna be Mixolydian. So I'm gonna say this is Mixolydian, another mode, let's put it here, it's gonna be G, Mixolydian. I'm gonna delete this stuff and I'm gonna say that now we're here. That's our focal point. So I'm gonna make that red make this one white renumber it one two three four five six seven this is going to be an i capital this is i i lowercase i i i dot diminished this is going to be iv or yeah iv and this is going to be v for number five and I'm going to delete, it's going to try to copy that, but I'm, and then this is going to be, this should be lowercase, V, delete, and then V, I, and then this is going to be capital V, I, I, and then this is going to be a G, that's our focal point, and then we have an A, we have a B, we have a C, we have a D, we have an E, and we have an F. The related numbers and chord is going to be a minor. Whoop, hold on a sec, that's not right. It's going to be a major G, and then a minor A, a minor A, and then a minor B, a major C, a minor D, a minor E, and a major F. Building the chords again. This should be not number one, but G. I'm gonna undo that. It's gonna be then G, tab, skipping the A to B, skipping the C to D. A, tab, skipping the B to C, skipping the D to E. And then B, tab, skipping the C to D, tab, skipping the E to F, enter. C, skipping the D to E, skipping the F to G, enter. And then we've got C, D, tab, skipping the E to F, tab skip in the G to a enter then we've got an E tab skipping the F to G tab skipping the A to B tab enter then we've got an F tab skipping the G to B tab skipping the B to 
50. Enter. Okay, so we're almost there. So that was because we, we've already done the minor. So we're not going to do that one. So there's only one more, which is going to be the last and possibly one of the least used ones. That's going to be uh, the Lokian. So let's copy that one. So I'm going to go from here to here, right control C, scroll up, put my cursor down and control V. One more time, last time, last round. I didn't hear no bell. This is going to be Lucien. And then we're going to put that here. And then this is going to be a B. So again, we're skipping the A because that's the minor. And we already looked at that because that's one of the, the two main ones. So we're going to go up here and say, let's make that our focal point from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Renumber here, I dot. And then this is going to be I, I capital. This is going to be three, lowercase, four, lowercase, five, capital, and uh, six, capital, and seven, lowercase. I'm going to delete this stuff. Repopulate. This is going to start at B. And then C. And then D. And then E. And then F. And then G. And then A. Then we'll put the relative numbers. This is going to be number one. This is going to be number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. And we'll go through this routine one more time. B, tab, skipping C to D, tab, skipping E to F, enter. C, tab, skipping D to E, tab, skipping F to G, right, E, F, G, and then D, tab, skipping E to F, skipping G to A, and then E, tab, skipping F to G, tab, skipping A to B, enter, and then E, tab, skipping G to A, tab, skipping B, to C, enter G, tab, skipping A to B, tab, skipping C to D, enter and A, skipping B to C, tab, skipping C to E, right, A, A, C, E. So I think that's it. So I think that's it. So let's save this. So now we've got everything in place. So I believe now we have a nice fretboard up top. We can, we can highlight the fretboard depending on what we want to be doing with it. We can map out any, any uh, notes that we want or any chord progression. And from the major chord, we can map out all the relative minors. And you could do that up here, meaning if I want to look at, say, a B, I can go from B to B, control C and paste that right here. And then I should have the, the B major formula, the relative pentatonic scale, I th which hopefully that came out. I think that, and then we've got the, the format in a circle, which is quite helpful to then map out our items out uh, here. Now this should be equal to, I should have this equal to this B right there. Let's do that all the way across. This this one should not be hard-coded. This should be equal to this. And this should be equal to this one. And then this should be equal to that. And then this should be equal to that. And then this should be equal to that. And then this should be equal to 
that and that should work so let's try another one just to see if that worked so let's go from let's go from D to D is that what I'm so let's go from D to D there's a lot of minors in B that's why that one looks a little funny so it's gonna paste that one here so now we should have the the major scale mapped out the related pentatonic scale and then the circle maps out with D now on top which we use to map out our major our major chords as well as the notes in each of those chords and then I can look at the relative minor. So it should have basically the same notes in it. So this starts at D and then here's the D, right? And so D, E, uh, and then the, the, the sharp or flat G, A, and then B, and then sharp or flat. So I think that makes sense. And then that should map out then to here, which is now the E Dorian, which is, re which is the related to the D major. So we're now building the the related modes, which does include the minor. So I think that all maps out. Now, now if I was to go over here, I could also change it this way. Like if I copied it down, if I wanted to not mess with this one up top and possibly keep this one at home base C, and then I wanted to copy it down so I don't mess up my old, my original. I could just copy this, Control C, and move it all down here, just so I can I can play with the one down here and keep the one on top. So now I can move it down, and I don't think that messes anything up the way we have our formula set up. So this is still C, still looks good. All the relatives references I think are pulling over properly. And if I move over here, because this is why we did those mixed references right here. Because now when I pull it over uh, to this side, I think we're still mapping out properly because it because it because of that mixed reference, it moved down properly. And so then if I change this to like like let's go let's change it to F this time. And I change the whole thing to F, then this whole thing still maps out. And there's the F major, or the S at the top of the circle. We've got the relative chord starting from F being built from the circle. We've got the relative minor to F, which is going to be a D. I believe that's right. And then we've got the pentatonics. So, so, that, so that's pretty nice. So again, I, I think it's a really handy thing to do, to use, because honestly, like, the tablature and stuff on this stuff is kind of confusing, but it's also a good Excel worksheet. So now you've got, and now you can use your formatting up top here. I'm actually going to remove the formatting first. I'm going to go up top and say, let's say we want to uh, remove the formatting just to test this out. I'm going to say clear everything. And then let's say that we want like the, the chords here uh, to be one color and then the other couple notes that are in the pentatonic another color and then the last couple notes that are in the major scale another color so we can see everything kind of how it lies on top of each other there's a bunch of different ways you can kind of use this to map out the fretboard right but you can use the modes and and whatnot which notes that you want to be working with but let's just play with that for now so let's i'm going to choose like a g because i'm more familiar with it rather than an, an f so i'm going to go from g to g copy that paste it right here something different than a c and so that's got that sharp uh here uh so so that's so that's a, where it's a little different than the c so then i'm going to select this and go up top and say let's say that we want this to be equal to i'm going to say this is going to be equal to and i'm going to pick the the chords in a g major so let's make it a, a G, let's make that one red, and then I'll make the other two chords in the major scale a different color. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to, let's make this one uh, yellow. And then I'm going to say drop down and equal to, let's make the D a yellow as well. So now we've got the root, which is, oh, hold on a sec, let me undo that one. I'm going to say condition i'm going to say equal to and then the d 
is going to be yellow. So now we've got the root in red and the other two that make up the, the major chord in yellow. And then maybe I want the other two notes to make up the pentatonic scale in another color. So let's select the whole thing again and say conditional formatting and say equal to. So now I've got, I've got a G. I don't have an A yet. So I'm going to be picking up the A and let's make it green. So I'm going to make it green and then okay. And then conditional formatting. And so I can say this is going to be equal to, and I'm, I've got the A, so now I've got a G, I've got uh, the B, I've got an A, uh, what do I need here? I need an E, right? I need the E. So those are the other two notes. So I'm going to say, okay, that makes sense, right? That makes sense. So I'm going to say that needs to be, I want that to be green. So there we have that. So now if I scroll in, does that make sense? Is this working? So now this is a G shape, which I should see right here. So I'm going to scroll all the way in, boom, zoom in. So now we've got our, our G shape. So that looks good because I can play the G uh, within here. Here's our G shape. And then the other couple notes to make our pentatonic scale around the G shape. And if I was to move that up, to here, this is shape, what I would call shape number two, or the caged system, you might call it uh, a, a G, uh, would be an E uh, shape, right, which would be right there. And so, boom, which, I mean, if this was, if you were borrowing this off, and you could play uh, those two right there, and you would have a E, or actually this would be an this one and those two, and that would be, yeah, your E major shape. So that makes sense. Uh, and then the pentatonic would be adding the other couple notes. And then you can continue to map this out and say, okay, shape number three uh, would, be, would be right there, right? You go boom, boom, shape number three. I think that's right, right? I'm getting a little tired here. But I think, I think that's shape number three, or you can call it from a caged si system. Uh, you've, you've got the G, uh, E, and then this would be the D shape, which would be right there. There's, the, there's, your, your, there's your D shape within the pentatonic, and you can see kind of like that overlap. I mean, it's a G chord with that D, with a D shape. That's why it gets a little confusing with naming it by that, by the shape versus the chord, but it actually works quite well if you can get that straight. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back down, and then you might want to put the added couple notes like in another color. Let's make them blue. That add the last couple notes to make the the major scale. So I'm going to go up top and say, let's do one more conditional formatting or two more, and say it's going to be equal to. And what, what do I need here? I, I need, if I go down to the major scale, I need this note, I believe. And so I'm going to say, and let's make that conditional. I'm going to fill it and just make it blue. And then boom. Okay, so there there is that one. And then I also need, I think I need that C right there. So I'm going to say C. I'm going to say rules and then equal to, and then I think I'm missing the four, which is the C, right? That's right, right? And then I'm going to make that boom and boom, same color. So now it looks a little messy here, right? When you get all these colors together, but that's why you can come up with your own system. So if I say, okay, let's scroll back all the way in and then and then we can say, okay, so now this is going to be a uh, position one. I could still see my G shape in it. This is my G shape. So my fingers would be here, here, here that I put in, in those colors. And then the added shapes to get to the pentatonic shape. Boom, boom. Uh, here, 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 here. 
here. That's right. This is like position one on the pentatonic shape. And then the added shapes to get from pentatonic, the two other the two other notes to get to the major, this would be the major shape. So you can see how one lies on top of the other. And then you can start working in terms of, I mean, if you're playing in the key of G, you're going to be playing around the G. And then the notes that lead into G are typically going to be the, the, the notes within the G major major and then you can add on top of those the nice safe notes of the pentatonic that that are moving a little bit way away from home that you want to go away from and then come back home with you know creating tension and then coming back home and then and then these notes you can think of as maybe even further from home right and that you're going to create more tension with and come home with and then if and then i can say okay position two including all the major scales notes would be right there i believe so there's the crossover so boom 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 so if you played that as your you know in your scale notes and you learned your five pentatonic kind of shapes across the keyboards and then you can kind of move that up so i think it's a really useful tool to play with way better than than most things like just a piece of paper or something you know so anyway plus it's fun to build in excel so check it out